Well, it's a beautiful day out today. It's kind of an Indian summer. It's in the uh, low 60s and feels awesome. The sun feels really good. Tons of leaves to be picked up. So I've been doing that, taking a little break here. Lit a uh, cigar. It's a uh, Romeo e Giulietta. And I've had these before. They're really good. But this one is just packed way too tight. It's really hard to get a draw off of it. But still tastes good. So anyway, <clears throat> I figured I'd... Uh, grab the camera since I'm sitting here anyway and tell you a story. Um, this story time video is going to be about the demon woman. The demon woman. Um, <laughs> I, I make fun of it and I, I joke around about it but it is a very serious experience that I've had. It's the first and only time I've ever experienced this and I, I truly believe that this woman was possessed by a demon. Okay, there's there's no, there's really, there's no other explanation at all. I can't think of anything. Now, of course, not everyone believes in demons and angels and, you know, hell and, and uh, you know, heaven and all that kind of stuff. It's up to uh, personal opinion. Um, before this incident, I think I always believed, you know, in angels and, and uh, the unexplained and, and things like that. I always joke around, I've always believed in Sasquatch. There's Sasquatch out there somewhere. People think I'm nuts for saying that. Uh, aliens, come on, with, uh, with all we know about space, you can't really think that we're the only creatures, right? Anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but, um, so I'm going to do a story time video for you guys. A lot of people have been commenting and asking for this to, uh, for me to talk about because I did mention it, and, uh, that's what we're going to do. That's what this video is. So, story time on the demon woman. <clears throat> so, I can't really... I can't, I don't have a picture of her, um, but I'm going to try to explain what she looked like. She was a, kind of a tall woman. She had to have been at least, at least 5'11", you know, almost 6 foot. Um, she had a kind of a long face, if that makes sense, kind of a real oval face. She wasn't like a, you know, short little old lady. She was kind of tall, lanky, skinny, very long, stringy, thin, gray hair. Um, and she looked very, like, ethnic. Uh, <laughs> I know it's kind of vague, but... She looked like she might have been um, a little Hispanic. Um, don't really know, but lots of lots of wrinkles and real like um, I don't know, kind of a harsh face. Now, when she first came into the home that I was working at, and that's where, if you don't know, these stories are coming from. Um, I worked at a uh, assisted living, you know, facility, and that's where you know I had this experience. I was already working for about a month or so when she came on board. She came into the uh, the housing units and she was introduced to everyone. She didn't talk at all. She didn't say a word. I actually thought she was mute for like the first three days because she didn't say a single word. I thought she couldn't talk. Um, but um, it turns out she just didn't talk to us. Okay, she talked to someone or something, but it certainly wasn't us. So um, what happened was when she came in, she was already kind of sick and uh, she didn't want to eat. She didn't want to do anything. Like I said, she didn't talk with anyone. She didn't do any of the activities. She literally just sat around with a blank stare. You know, just on the couch. Okay, it's time to eat. You know, and someone have to go over there and say, okay, come on. And I'm not going to give her a real name, obviously. Um, so, what do we call her? Let's call her uh, Susie. All right, just for the sake of the story. So, we'd have to go get Susie because, you know, everyone knew when all the, the meal times were and Everyone would wander into the kitchen and, you know, get ready for breakfast or lunch or whatever, and Susie would just be sitting on the couch or, or sitting on the chair in the, you know, TV room or even going into the activity room not doing anything. She wasn't, like, doing the puzzles or playing any of the games or anything. She was just sitting there, just total blank stare. So kind of sad in the beginning. Sad, like, okay, she's not all there, maybe. Maybe she has some mental problems, you know, who knows. But uh, she wouldn't eat, even since day one. <clears throat> she was just... Uh, on insurers, you know, the liquid drinks. Um, she had insurers and she also had something else, some other brand, but it was essentially the same thing. It was like a little milkshake with all the nutrients you need. And it's amazing to me because I knew multiple people who um, were at the home that didn't really eat much at all and they lived on that stuff. Literally, three meals a day, you know, or sometimes it'd be two meals a day for, you know, as long as I was there and from what I heard, years. So apparently you can't live on it. Um, it gives you enough nutrients to keep going. But uh, anyway, this woman wouldn't eat. Wouldn't talk to anyone, wouldn't socialize, just nothing, just dead, just... Mm. And she always wore dark clothes, you know, it's not like she was a, a gothic old lady. Um, but she didn't have anything with, like, a nice 
fun pattern or anything with color. It was all like gray and brown and black. So um, she would always need uh, help with everything except for the bathroom. Some of the people there needed to assistance for showering, needed assistance for going to the bathroom and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes people would have accidents, she'd have to clean them up and uh, of course that's not never a fun thing. And it's, ne you know, of course it's, it's absolutely disgusting. And I've said this before and if there's children watching, get them out of the room for a second for this little statement. Give you a quick pull. Obviously, you can pause the video. Um, but there's... I don't think I've ever done anything more disgusting in my life than cleaned shit out of a 95-year-old vagina. So, there's that. Um, but yeah, these people needed... Some of them were farther beyond what we could do for them. Technically, they should have been, like, in a hospital. You know what I mean? Having some kind of hospital care. And, and some of these people... You know, even before, I heard all kinds of stories, when, you know, before I was working there. But people really should have been in hospice at some point, you know, and they, they weren't. They were just in these, these you know, homes. So anyway, um, but this woman, no, no problems like that. She bathed herself, okay? Uh, not very often, though, okay? When you, when you go there, the families, you can sign a waiver basically saying that we can't force your loved one to shower. Uh, and there were a couple people there like that, and they just smelled horrible. This woman smelled of death because she would shower maybe twice a month. Um, and just sitting around, just, I don't know, being old and just not doing anything, you just start to smell, okay? And it accumulates, that's why we shower, so we don't smell. Not only is it so we don't smell and offend other people because we care how other people think of us, uh, but it's also for hygiene purposes, okay? Especially, like, old ladies, they got, they got big, saggy breasts, and, like, I'm not even kidding you when I tell you that when I'm at this home, there were certain women that we had to literally lift up their tit, and clean like the mold out from underneath because you have think about it you have like this long pancake titty that's just resting against their their body and there's there's just skin on skin content there's no air they sweat it's just wet and damp and dark you could probably grow mushrooms under there so that was that's a whole different thing but this woman um like i said at least at least she did it herself when she did it she just chose not to do it and again like when you're trying to talk to this person um you're, you're saying like, hey, you want to do this or you want to go that, and it's just dead. There's nothing. She's not talking back to you. Half the time, she's not even looking at you. Or sometimes she'll be, it'll be a dead stare. Let's say you guys are me, and you're talking to me. I'm Susie, right? Is that what we call her, Susie? Um, and you're just saying, hey, we want to do this, and she's just, and sometimes she go like this, and stare at you, and you're like, oh, and you, you feel like, you know, I got her attention now, and then you repeat the question or repeat the statement, and nothing, just, just totally blank, dead stare. So, um, this is, this is the situation that happened. So I had very little contact with her in the beginning. Okay. The first probably two weeks she was there and she wasn't there very long. I think she was there for a month, a little over a month altogether. Then she left and I'll tell you what happened after she left. Um, but this was towards the end of her stay. This is about like, I think it was two days before she actually left. Same deal. Okay. It's, it was dinner time and uh Oh, Susie's not here. Jeff, can you go down and get her? And how the, the place was, was there was like different wings, okay? So you have the main area in the middle with like the, the kitchen and the front desk and the sitting room. And then you go off into this hallway and then the game room's off into, you know, one one corridor, I guess, off there. And then it's kind of set up like a hotel. And there's different wings. And down the wings, there's rooms on either side. And of course, exits at the end of every uh, little wing or, or hallway. And, you know, there's, there's bathrooms for each wing, too. You know, the communal shower and, and toilet and stuff like that. And then some of the rooms, depending on how much you're paying for your loved ones to stay there, some have their own bathroom. Uh, but not all the rooms do. Some are bigger than others. Kind of like a, a hotel. You know, if you want to pay more money, they'll be more comfortable. There's more room. But anyway, so she's at the last room all the way at the end of the furthest corridor. Okay, so it's the furthest spot from the center, uh, center mass, okay, where we all eat. So it's like, oh, Susie's not here, I don't know. And I'm not the person that ever got her, ever, okay? I maybe go talk to her in the communal room or the, the uh, game room or something, but I was never, it was never my responsibility specifically to go get her because some of the people that were more problematic, uh, people, who, like I said, people didn't shower, people who um, didn't listen, they didn't communicate very well, people had a little bit more of the medical problems, they basically had the women who had more experience go handle those people, makes sense, right? But no, everyone was busy. Uh, one woman was off who was sick, who usually took care of Susie, uh, like personally went and taught and you know tried to coerce her to come down and you know help her walk and stuff like that because she was kind of frail too. 
she was falling apart physically and mentally obviously okay if this was not some kind of um you know demon that was in it was just her brain turned to mush okay that's that's the only other real explanation like if you don't believe in this kind of stuff and you don't believe in demons and, and hell and the devil and that would that's how you would explain it you would explain that her brain just made her do this stuff then that's why it didn't make sense and maybe we're interpreting it as something demonic but trust me if you were there okay i i mean obviously there's no way i can get footage of it but i wish i had footage i wish i can actually show you that experience because uh, it can't be replicated okay i've never seen anything like this in my life so this is the setup now you know the person now you know the situation here's the here's the moment okay when this happened so <clears throat> She's not coming down. Oh, shit. This so-and-so is out for the day. This person's busy. This person's busy. So the main um, nurse that was there, she asked me, she's like, can you please go down uh, to room blah, 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 get uh, Susie, bring her back for, for dinner. And they got her little thing set up, her little um, insure, you know, with the straw. She always needed a straw because she couldn't lift it up. She didn't touch, like, really grab stuff. She wasn't physical. You know, she was just kind of there. I'm like, all right, fine. I really didn't think anything of it, honestly. I thought I'd go down there, and she wouldn't listen to me, and I'd come back and just say, hey, you know, she's not listening. And then someone else would go and, and actually physically bring her down here. Because I, I never liked forcing anyone to do anything, and some of the nurses were like that. Like, if someone didn't want to get up, they'd just grab their arm and kind of lift them up and say, come on, let's go. You know, I, I kind of gave people more time to do it themselves. So uh, maybe, maybe less hands-on, I guess. But anyway, so I'm walking down there. I'm not thinking anything bad is going to happen or anything like that. I get to the room, she's in the bathroom, okay? She has a little bit of a larger room with like a, a sectional couch and a bed and her own little personal bathroom, which is just a toilet, there's no shower in there. There's a shower in the hallway that they use. But she's her own little private bathroom, which is nice. So she's in there, and I hear her talking. Holy shit, I, I never heard her say anything, ever, okay? So I kind of walk over, I say, I say, hi, Susie, you know, um, we're having dinner. When you're all done, if you want to come out, because she needed help getting her socks on, okay? She dressed herself, but her socks specifically and her shoes, she couldn't, I guess, bend over enough to do it. So the nurses would always do that for her. So the nurse, and she told me this too. She's like, okay, she gets dressed and everything herself, but you got to put her socks and shoes on. All right, fine, whatever, no big deal. So I'm there. She's in the bathroom, and I hear her talking. Like, Holy shit, she's talking. So I lean in, right, ear to the door, and she's talking, and, and at first it sounded like she was speaking a different language. Again, being Hispanic, I thought, hey, maybe she's speaking Spanish. I don't know Spanish. I, very, very basic things. I can maybe get myself to a hospital or something or get food if I, if I went to a Spanish-speaking country, but I can't have a conversation. I don't know what the hell she's saying. So I'm really listening, and, and it's just, it's kind of like mumbling. It, it's such a... But she's making these, like, really weird noises. Really weird, like, they don't, they don't sound like words. They're just, they're just noises. Um... And it sounded kind of creepy. And her voice did not match. You know, some people's faces don't match their voices. You know, like you'll see someone, maybe he's like a real burly dude and he's got a big beard and he's a big old guy, old muscle, and he's got like a little high pitched voice. You know, and you're like, whoa, that didn't, that didn't match up at all. And then same thing, there might be like this, uh, this hot kind of, you know, petite woman. She's got this manly voice real deep. So anyway, so the voice doesn't really match with her. Okay, she's a little old lady. Well, she's a tall old lady, but she's a frail old lady. She, and she had this kind of masculine deep voice, right? So I knock on the door. Susie, come on. We're, you know, going into uh, to dinner time. Come on out. I'll get your, your socks and shoes on, whatever. And I'm sitting there, and maybe like two or three minutes goes by. I'm sitting on the bed, the edge of the bed. So the door opens. The door opens, and she's wearing, she has her, her shirt on and um, her underwear, and that's it. Just shirt and underwear, and the shirt was like, like kind of a sweater. It wasn't like a like a little t-shirt or like an undershirt or anything. It was like a full-blown long-sleeve sweater, and just her underwear. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, um, you know, do you have a pair of pants in your drawer? I'll bring your pair of pants, whatever. Just mumbling still, okay. But she's staring dead at me. I mean, like, like into my soul, okay, with her eyes, and she's doing. The, I don't want to, like, okay. I'm still, I'm getting a little creepy, like, or creepy. I'm getting a little creeped out by this situation, but I'm not thinking anything bad of it. I'm just thinking, okay, well, whatever, she's got some problems. So I go into a dresser, and I point a pair of pants. I'm like, oh, do you want this pair of pants? And she's just, same thing, just, speaking in tongues, okay? No idea what the hell she's saying. So I'm like, okay, well, well let's try this pair. I bring the, the pants over to her. I go to hand her the pants, smacks them out of my hand on the ground. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm really not ready for that. Just rude as hell. Just whoosh. Okay, so I'm I'm like, oh, uh, and I, I didn't really know how to react right away. I'm not like, hey, screw you. No, I'm like, I'm like oh, okay. I was kind of taken back by it, and I, I bent over and picked the pants up, and then I, I didn't go to hand her to anymore. I'm like, oh, do you want a different pair of pants? And, and she just, I, I, I was, okay. Go to the dresser. I grabbed a totally different pair of pants, even though her whole dresser is all the same types of, like, friggin' corduroy pants and pants suit pants, you know. Grab a different color, bring her over to her, and... Smacks it on my hand again. Are you kidding me? So, <laughs> at this point, I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated, but I really don't know how to act. How to act. I don't. I wasn't trained in like, okay, there's a disobedient old woman. What do you What do you do? Like, I'm not gonna force the pants on her. You know, I'm not her child. I can't tell her what to do. Uh, I was kind of starting to get nervous. I'm like, well, how am I gonna fix the situation? I'm thinking, all right, I'll just go back and have someone else do it. But I'm, and at the same time, I was thinking, no, you know. This is my job. I take care of these people. I should be able to do this too. Just because it's very uncomfortable, uh, you know, doesn't mean I have to cop out and go get someone else to do it. So I pick up the pants off the ground, and I kind of hold her, held her by you know the back of her arm, not not hard or anything, but I kind of held her, you know, put my hand behind her her arm and said, "Oh, come on, well, let's go over the bed, and I'll help you get your pants on. It's fine." So she gave me this dirty look, and, she went, and whatever she was saying, she got aggressive. She went. Hush, 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 hush what the hell was that so but and she like leaned into me too when she did that and i kind of like backed up whatever but then she started walking so i'm like okay fine some progress so i get her over she sits down on the chair even though i want her to sit in the bed the chair is like this big fluffy chair she sits all the way back in it there's no effing way i'm gonna get her pants on this stupid big chair so all right fine so she's sitting deep like back in the chair her legs don't even you know touch the ground i start putting her pants on i get her pants on like completely to her knees and pull up the pants part so this way I can start putting her socks on you know and then I'll I figure I put her socks and shoes and then when, by the time I stood her up I can lift the pants up again so, you know so pants are on I, I grab the socks hey do you want these socks you know and, and just like like something it's not like not, not to make fun of it um or to make it sound fun because it was not fun I was starting to get nervous and scared okay um but you know like uh Adam Sandler, I couldn't I, I picture his face, couldn't think of his name. Adam Sandler does his like jibber jabber, you know, when he speaks like that. That's kind of what it sounded like, but scary, not funny at all. Um, so she's still the entire time speaking under her breath, like, you know, and just in all these different weird noises and, and just totally no idea what she's saying. But it did, it did not sound like she was speaking another language. It just sounded like noises, okay, weird noises. And again, very, very deep. So... At this point, I grab a pair of socks. She doesn't acknowledge what I'm saying, so I said, screw it. This is the socks she's wearing. Go to put her socks on. Okay, and her... her <laughs> it's actually a lot of the old women uh, were like this, but her toenails were just jacked. Just jacked. And like a lot of old women, their pinky toe is like totally crooked because they lived in a different era where women wore high heels and nothing was comfortable. It's not like today where women just go to Walmart with their hair just you know, in a crap bun, you know, they don't even care what they look like, they got pajama pants on, like slippers, they just don't give a shit. No, this, uh, women of the, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, they, they all, they dressed up, okay, so a lot of these old ladies that I, I dealt with, their feet are jacked up, like all crisscross and stuff, because they're wearing these high heels their whole life, and so she has these, like, dinosaur looking feet, and her nails literally come to a point, okay, so I'm trying to put her sock on, on the one foot, and her nail keeps grabbing the material of the sock, and it's like starting to rip the side of the sock as I'm like trying to put it on, I'm like, Jesus Christ. And she's starting to get frustrated, and she's been getting louder. <laughs> Making all these noises. Holy shit. So I'm kind of freaked out. I get the sock on. I get the other sock. I just, I cram it on real quick, okay? I go to pull her pants up a little bit over. She leans in grabs me by the shoulders and screams into my face. I'm, I'm talking right here. Ah! I, I mean like a blood-curdling scream, like someone was stabbing her in the heart. Holy shit. I, I, I jumped back. I actually fell. Like I lost my balance, fell backwards, almost did a friggin' somersault, okay? Jumped up, looked at her. She st immediately stopped screaming. Not like, not like she was screaming super loud and then faded off. No, just, ah! And just dead. Wow. 
what? What the hell just happened? So at this point now, now it went from like nervous that I'm not gonna be able to complete my tasks and actually do my job to what, what, what the hell's wrong with this woman? She's mental. Something, something is really weird and different here. Then, then she, when I'm looking at her, I can see her eyes. Now she has like, um, she has dark eyes like me, like kind of, I guess, hazel or brown or whatever. Her eyes glazed over. I mean, glassy. Like, you know, when you see, um, like certain blind people, they have that where you can see their pupil, but the whole thing, their whole eye is foggy over the pupil as well. Her eye, I literally saw her eyes change. It just glossed over completely. Where at the point where I saw where her pupil was, but it was very faded. Okay, almost like her, it was a storm. It was, it was so weird. And I got completely quiet. I didn't, I couldn't move. My body literally froze. Okay, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, um, I couldn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. But I physically couldn't do anything. I, I felt like someone was holding my body so I couldn't move. And, I, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do right now? Am I supposed to continue to, to do? Uh, and at this point, I want to leave. I'm getting really, really uncomfortable with her. And I just want to leave. So I'm kind of freaking out. I feel like I can't move. I can't go anywhere. I really don't know what to do. And, and something came over me where it just it's like, all right, just pull her pants up and just get her out of here and be fine. You'll be done with it, okay? So one more thing. It's not a big deal. I spent about two or three more minutes asking her to pull her pants up, okay? Hey, can you, can you please pull, or can you stand up? That's what it was. I need her to stand up so I could pull her pants up. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't acknowledge me still, though I'm uh, mumbling, whatever. So at this point, I hear a knock on the door. I go over to the door. I open the door. It's um, one of the other women who is actually not the one next door, but the one over from that room asking me what the scream, because she heard the scream, okay? Now, mind you, I don't know if anyone else heard the scream in the main hall or the main uh, dining area, because this is literally... I don't know, 80, 90 feet from that area. Even though she screamed, the door shut. I don't know who else heard it, but this woman came. Oh my God, is is Rosie, whatever. Is she, she okay? I heard her scream. I said, oh yeah, she's she's totally fine. We're just getting her dressed and we're gonna go down. I said, why don't you go down the, the uh, cafeteria area and you know I'll meet you down there. We'll have dinner. So oh, okay, okay, it's fine. And this is a really nice woman that's totally there, like mentally, physically, the whole thing. She just happens to be old, nowhere to go, so she's living there. So she's trying to come over and help because she heard the scream. So she's gone now. I figure, screw this. I'll, I'll lift her up. We'll get the pants on, and that's it. I go over to her. I, I, same thing. I, I said, I'm going to put my hand on your back. I'm, I'm going to help you up. Okay, I told her this before I even touched anything, because I'm really, really freaked out at this point. So, so she doesn't acknowledge me, doesn't say anything, but doesn't get loud or anything. So I'm like, okay, fine. Lifted her up. Got her straight up. Okay, now I'm down, pulling her pants up. Pants are up. Everything's fine. Just Okay, cool. No problem at all. Put her, uh, her, um, you know, buttoned her pants, put the zipper up and everything. And then I'm fixing her shirt, excuse me, over the pants. And she reaches out, grabs my arm, one arm with both hands, digs her nails in and scrapes down my arm. And then I swear to God in a deep, deep, not, not like, not like a deep woman's voice, a man's voice, a totally different voice than what I've been hearing this entire time. She leans in and says, fuck you, and, and rips my skin off, scratches the hell out of my arm. And I had scratches all over my arm from both of her hands digging in and scraping by. And I, I literally, I pulled back, fuck this, I'm out. And I, I left, I literally left her there, almost ran back. I mean, I'm walking fast, I'm starting to sweat. My, my arm hurts, but it's not, like, it's not like she ripped me open. I mean, I just had scratches because she's still kind of a weak grip. But I was so freaked out. By what happened her, her her eyes being different her voice completely changing like that all right and her physically attacking me this is a woman who's never moved never said anything ever and she's speaking in different tongues it freaked me out i saw the devil in her eyes when she said that to me and i i got really nervous my heartbeat was just pumping like crazy i got really scared it was it was the, the first time in my life like i've been scared for different things you know but none of them were real threats ever when you're a kid, you're scared of the boogeyman, you know? When you're an adult, maybe you're walking through a rough part of town and you're hoping a gang member doesn't attack you, you know? There's a lot of legitimate things that scare adults throughout life. Um, but this is a real threat that was right there, okay? It actually happened to me. My heart is pumping out of my chest. I go down there, I tell one of the, the nurses that were there, oh my God, Rosie attacks, she scratched my arm. She's like, oh my God, it's fine. You know, go over and, and here's the, the first aid kit and there's bandages, there's cream in there, you can clean yourself up and everything. She's like, don't worry about it, I'll go down, I'll, I'll bring her down. So she goes down the room, I'm cleaning myself up, I'm just, I'm shaking. My, hand, my hand's like, 
I can't believe what just happened. It's not the physical, like, scratch. I mean, who cares? There were little scratches, not a big deal. Um, but the ex I've never experienced that, anything even remotely close to that in my entire life. This woman had a demon in her, okay? There, there, it just, I, that's what I believe. I truly believe she had something that was possessed, okay? She was possessed with some kind of, of negativity, uh, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. So, like two or three minutes later... I see her walking down the hall with the, with the woman, totally not making any noise, not mumbling, not saying anything at all, dead silent, like I've always known her to be. Sits down, she goes like this, you know, with her fingers, leans in, and just drinks her insure. Doesn't look at me, doesn't acknowledge me, doesn't make any noise, nothing. Then the nurse came back over and she's asking me, she's like, okay, well, what happened? What were you doing? You know, she scratched you and I, I explained the whole situation or everything about it. And she's like, oh, that's really weird. I never, I never seen anything like that with her. She doesn't make any noise. She doesn't talk to me. She doesn't talk to any other staff. She's like, are you sure? She kept asking me, are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Why, why do I make that up? What, what, what would I gain from that? What do you think? I went in there and smacked the hell out of her and then she scratched me. So now I'm making up some ludicrous story. Uh, maybe maybe that woman that's what she really thought who knows I have no idea, but she she's totally fine She's like that's fine. She's she's actually really sick. So she's gonna be transferred soon So, you know skip two days ahead two days later. She leaves and by the way since this incident I have not entered anywhere near her room Okay, and uh, there was two other times where someone asked me. Oh, can you go give this to to Rosie? No, no, I'm not. I'm sorry I'm like she scratched me. And there was an incident or whatever. So I'm just staying away from her I'm like, okay, that's fine. I understand um Two days later, she got transferred to a hospital and died on the way. So the story that I heard, okay, is when she was in the ambulance, literally being transferred, okay, because she got really sick. She had the flu or something. Some, some, I think it was the flu. Or maybe it was pneumonia. She had something the last day, and that's when she was transferred over towards the hospital, and they took her in an ambulance, and in the ambulance, this is a story I heard from another nurse, not from someone who saw it or anything, but it was like word of mouth. Supposedly, she had a heart attack, and in the ambulance, while she was having a heart attack, she screamed out, get him out, get him out, screaming, and then she died. How fucked up is that? Ridiculous. So that kind of, for me, that hearing that story because the nurse was talking about it, like oh it's really weird they don't know what's going on hearing that i knew that and when and the nurse that i explained this whole story to when she was saying that to the other nurse and, and talking in a group she looked at me and she kind of gave me like a weird look like okay maybe your story's right maybe something was really weird something was up so i don't i don't know <laughs> there's no there's no explanation for that how do you explain that uh i have no idea but that was my experience with the the demon woman uh, I truly believe that she was possessed. She could have just been losing her marbles. I don't know. But uh, that scared the shit out of me. That that was the scariest moment I've ever had in my life because that was real. That's like people who, who talk about, you know, being afraid of a ghost as opposed to people who tell ghost stories. The things they actually experience, whether it was an illusion or whether, uh, you know, the brain tricked you into thinking you saw something you didn't or hear something you didn't or whatever. But it's different having the experience than being afraid of that actually happening. It's like, it might be scary for some people to watch a movie of Jason. You know, they're like, oh, and they're like on the edge of their seat. Oh, he's going to attack the woman. But imagine the difference between that and being chased by Jason. You know what I mean? That, that's the, the, <laughs> what, the comparison I'm, I'm trying to give you guys. So, um... Yeah, wow, that it was a really eerie feeling, and even when she was gone, way after she was gone, that room was empty for the duration of me working there, and uh, I went in the room once to go pick up blankets, which we were going to use, they were like communal blankets, you know, because we gave them all kinds of stuff besides, um, you know, uh, things for the room, like furniture, we had a big, a big storage shed, so like when someone came in to, to move into a new room, they would be able to pick out like, okay, yeah, I, like a dress, I like this dresser, or like I want to do work at the desk, can I use this desk, or their bedding, they pick up their bedding, so anyway, so to go in there, collect blankets to go back into the, the shed, and it was just a really weird feeling I got in the room, and the room was freezing, freezing, and the, the thermostat said it was totally fine, it was like 61, or 61, 71, 72, something like that, but I went there, I felt like I was 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Just really weird. Really, really weird. I like it. So I never went back in that room ever again. No one while I was working there ever, you know, lived in that room anymore. It was just eerie. The whole thing was just really creepy and really unexplainable. I don't like things that I can't explain. I don't like having experiences that just have no conclusion. I'll never know what was up with that woman. 
Um, but every now and then, like I'll kind of think about it, ugh, creeps me out. I, I really don't even want to think about it. So, but I, I want to tell you guys a story because I, I did mention it. I had thought that I previously talked about this. So I think it was my last uh, story time video, maybe the one before that. Um, when I asked you guys, like, oh, hey, I don't, I don't know if I talked about that. Did I talk about it? And you're like, no, 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 you got to tell us now. Well, now you know. So that's a story I'll never talk about it again because it really does creep me out. I'm not even kidding. I, I have, like, goosebumps thinking about it. So it's, it's freaky. So I'm going to shut the camera off, <laughs> and I'm going to have to relight the cigar that clearly went out. Um, and then I get back to, uh, to cleaning leaves. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Uh, let me know if you've ever had any kind of experiences with that, anything you've um, seen or heard in life that really just really creeped you out. You know what I mean? That that was That's my creepiest story ever. Nothing topped that. I have a, a couple other weird things that's happened to me. Nothing even close to that moment. That moment, seeing her eyes, her, her voice changing, her eyes changing. Her eyes literally changed, okay, how they look. How do you explain that scientifically? Even if she wasn't all there, how do you explain that? The voice thing, totally weird. I don't know how she could have even made that that man voice. Not to mention how crude that was from a woman who doesn't even talk to anyone. Um, and just physically abusing me. Why, why would an old lady, I'm, I'm trying to help her get dressed. I barged in, you know, I'm talking to her through this whole process. I'm a very nice person, you know, in, you know, dealing with her and stuff. So why would she have attacked me? It makes no sense at all. So that's why I draw the conclusion that you know, she was, uh, you know, she had some kind of demon in her. Who knows? So anyway, there you go. There's my story on the, uh, the demon woman. Uh, very, very weird stuff. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.